Hi guys, welcome to Kai Jangle Tutorials. So as you know, in the last video, we have successfully created our first very first serializer. We have designed our custom user model. And the last where we left was that we have created our serializer. We have defined this meta class. And now we shall or we can proceed with the front end part where we will design a, a very first page or very first component to register the user. And as I mentioned, we'll use Material UI. So the very first thing we'll do is install Material UI in our React. So what we can do is I can material UI React and we'll take help from official documentation only. So this is already given here only. So let me just copy it and click on get started. And I use the light theme. I somehow like the light theme a lot. I mostly prefer dark theme, but in this particular case, I like the light theme a lot. So all I can do is CD front end and okay, I haven't been copied. So let me just come to the installation section and I will be using NPM to install it. And let me just copy it here. By the time, uh, okay, okay. Uh, let me also tell you that the my node version is currently 16. 16 is also a LTS version, so it is long term supported. So I won't be having any problem. Uh, now it is in all, 18 is also released. So if you are having 18, so 18, 18 version 18 is also a LTS version. So that's also fine. So there's nothing to worry about that as well. So you can continue with the tutorial pretty easily. Okay, our material UI or material library is complete. So Installation is completed, so I can simply do npm start. So this will basically run our React server. This usually takes 10 to 15 seconds to start up or load for the very first time, and then the process becomes really fast. But for the very first time, you have to wait 10 to 15 seconds, in some cases up to 30 seconds or a minute, but it will gradually start. So don't worry about that. Let us just wait. By the time this is waiting, let's, let's set up bootstrap. Okay, so I can do local post. Three thousand, I guess. React is by default, I guess, running in three thousand. Okay, it is starting. Okay, by the time it is starting, let's set up Bootstrap in our system because we'll use basic Bootstrap classes such as text enter and margin top and all these sort of things. So I mean, I, I like to have Bootstrap in my uh, any project I'm creating. So I like to have it. So I'll just copy the CSS link. I'll come here and inside after my title, I'll paste it. And similarly, I'll get this JS link as well. And indeed, I'll paste it here. So my bootstrap is installed. Okay, React is also up and running. Now we can test our bootstrap. So what we can do in here, we can create one div. And inside div, we can give h1 heading, hello bootstrap. Okay, and now if we give this class of text, center so this is basically a bootstrap class to center the text and it is so that means our bootstrap is working okay okay so our basic uh, setup is done now also to make endpoint request or to make api request we will be using exios uh, ex uh, those who don't know exios is a javascript library to work with apis or to make api request we have fetch as well which is default one in javascript uh, but i like to use exios so i'll stick to that only you can use fetch as well if you're comfortable with that so Exios install I'll type and I'll just copy this only. Okay. Let me just terminate this. This also takes some time. Okay. Also, you can verify that whether these packages are installed or not by going to the package.json file. So in here we have this okay, by default it is running. Yeah. So by default we have this package.json. So after Exios installation, you can see we have Exios here. Similarly, if we talk about material UI, then you can see this, we have material UI here as well. So that means these things are already installed in my system. So you can think of pack. So all you have to do when you're giving this project to someone or when uh, you are uh, committing it, then the other person can just simply type it out npm install. And by default, npm will install all the packages or all the dependencies that are listed here. So emoticon react, emoticon style, material UI these packages or these dependencies will be directly installed into their system by this, just this command. So you can think of this as an alternative add to requirements.txt file and Python we have. So this is somewhat similar, but here we call them as package.json. So I just wanted to explain you that, what package.json is. Now what we can do is in our SRC folder, we can create one folder called components and in components, here we will store all our components related, whether small or big, that are related to the project. So I like to keep them under one uh, directory. And the very first component we'll create is called register.js. So this will basically 
uh, handle all the things related to the registration process. So what I can do, I can just type it out RFC here, RFC. So this will automatically give me this uh, function with export default and all of the basic things we need for our React component. So this is happening because of this uh, uh, extension called React Redux React Native. So in the, here are uh, given sh some short abbreviations that you need. So you can test this out. So this is the comp uh, extension I'm using for these kinds of shortcuts and short techniques. So if I save this and in my app.js, app so you know basically app.js is the entry point for anything in React. And in React, you can see that this is looking somewhat uh, HTML, but it's not totally HTML. In React, we used to call this or we call this as JSX. So JSX basically means that you are writing your HTML as a part of function and you're returning this, that HTML as a function. There are some differences than the native HTML and I'll show you as we go along with the project. But this is basically how we return HTML. So in our app.js as well, you can see that all the things that you're seeing here is created by this only. And you can see that instead of class, we are using class name because class is already a reserved keyword in JavaScript language. So you cannot use that. And that's why uh, React sort of come up with their own keyword for classes and that is class name. So what I can do, I can just remove all these things and I can simply like returning HTML, you can return your own component as well. So I'll return this register component. So I'll give register. And because of that suggestion when I press enter, this is already imported here. If I save this, you can see this register for today. So now anything I'll do here. So let me just give it a side h1. Okay. This is now uh, coming in h1 tag. So anything I'll or any changes I'll make in this component will register in our app.js as well because we are rendering that component here. <laughs> Later on, we'll understand how we can navigate from one component to another using React Router DOM. You must have seen uh, applications like Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube for that matter, where you just have to load the page once, and whenever after on uh, or whenever from there onwards you navigate to another page, uh, then normal browser refresh is not happening. Instead, a loader comes up or these kinds of things happen, and you navigate to another page. So this is possible from React and React Router DOM only. Or in Angular, there are other things for this approach, but that's what we call a single page application because you load the page at once. So in this also, you have only one HTML file and it is loaded at once. Uh, and then we'll just mount one component after another or one component in place of other. And that's how things happen. So in, uh, we have register, uh, we have return our register component. And that's why we are able to see this. So as of now, I'm, I'm not getting into React Router DOM. However, in next video, maybe after that, we have to set up that to navigate from one component to another or after our uh, login, we have to navigate user from that particular login page or register page to our home page. And then all these things we'll do uh, from our React router down only. Now, coming on to our register model, we have to create form. So let's concentrate on that. Also in JSX, one very basic things and uh, one very basic thing and important thing is that you have to return a single element. What I mean by this, like if I return this div and if I return uh, another div, and you can see I'm getting error here. And if I save this, then what is the error let's see in our browser? So here you can see this, that just in JSX element must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. So this is basically saying that you have to return everything in one enclosing tag. So like if I want to return this, then what I can do is create one more div and inside it I can return. Then I'm getting no error, you can see. Okay. So just remember that you have to return one complete element in JSX. So for that, instead of uh, wrapping everything inside another div and then another div, there's something called React Fragment. So you can uh, use this syntax as well. And this works absolutely fine as well. You can see no errors there. So opening, closing uh, every, uh, tags and then closing this. Okay. Okay. So you have to, now you understood that you have to enclose everything under one parent tag or you can use Fragment as well. So this is what we call as React Fragment. Okay. So let me just remove this. So now we are ready to create our form. So what I can do in our material UI component, I can search for text fields. So there are different uh, text fields you can use. You can use outline one, you can use required and these things uh, like these things. But uh, I, I mostly like these outline ones. So I use this only. So all I have to do is import text field from this. So I can do import text field or I can say text field from instead of writing complete I can use this and in here I can say let me just copy this okay so my text field is ready let's see if it is working or not 
you can see text field is coming fine i can give it as class called container a bootstrap class so it will basically center everything not center it, it will basically give margin from left and right and then i'll give a class called uh, text center so basically this will i guess center everything yes now i can use another text field as well so i i basically want four text field and those will be email first name last name password right so i'll, I'll just copy paste this four times outline basic would be id so i'll, I'll give id as email uh first name last name and last would be password label i can type as email uh, first name last name and then password so okay so these are inline elements so i should actually wrap them inside single div tag so this would be better let me just fast forward and add to it for you So our form is complete now what we can do we can give a bootstrap class of margin top of p so as i said uh, I'll, I'll not use css that much probably and i'll use the inbuilt one or take help from the external libraries and dependencies so yeah okay our form is already looking quite decent okay uh, what else we need uh, we need a button so we can have button as well so i'll just come here and type out button so a basic button with this i think this will work this contained button so all i have to do is import button sorry here import button and right after this i can say button i can just copy it from here so i want this contained one okay and i can write save yeah and similarly i can wrap this as well in my dev Last name will be empty three, and now we can paste it here. Yeah. So the good thing about uh, Material UI is that uh, if you can use the functions such as on click and on change and all these functions, similarly you will similarly you must do with your input statements or input fields. So uh, it's not like anything changes. You are just using the inbuilt design and an inbuilt styles provided by Material UI. So that's all you are doing. Similarly, we can give type as email and we can give it a type as text type as text and like for now if you type anything in password you can see it so we want to make sure that it is of type password so we can set type password and now if we go ahead and type anything you can see that it is now a password field and this will now accept a email and like all the attributes that are available in normal input field this is available in material ui theme as well and you get to have this extra css or this style as well so that's the good thing about material ui so a basic uh, css or a basic register form is ready you can obviously customize it more if you want so i'll just uh, copy paste css from my previous projects and i'll change this form accordingly and push the code to my github repo so that's all for this video i just wanted to install the packages or necessities that we need and i just wanted to make sure that we have a form in here in the next video we'll uh, create a function to submit this form to make an endpoint request and then save that data to our database as well. And as I said, we will be using MySQL database and also we'll use uh, the concept of use state hook in our, our React. If you don't know what states are, I recommend that you go through this once at least. So states are basically a way of handling the state of the page or state of a component. And if that state changes and if you want to trigger something, we can do using state. So we'll understand in much more depth in the next video. And in the next video, we'll set up React Router as well, because as soon as user hits this save button, we want to uh, navigate user to any other page. So that's all for the next video as of now. Once again, thank you so much for watching, guys. And please, guys, do like, share, and subscribe. And see you in the next video.